Welcome in Kairudor. Today we are going to continue our characteristics, our properties, our features for sound. Let's start by sound interference. Let's see. Be attention in this wonderful flash. Look here. Here we have two sources of sound. They produces they produces two waves. These two waves meet together, interfere with together, superpose together. There is a superposition. I repeat it again, please. You have to concentrate well. Okay. I repeat it again. So here, yes, interference of sound. This is a source of sound, another source of sound. These two sources of sound, like the two speakers of your computer. Of course, you have a computer at your home. So the two speakers of sound, the two speakers of sound, makes, make, produces two waves, types of waves here, the same waves. Okay? So they interfere together. So what is meant by sound interference? Sound interference is a phenomenon. Sound interference is a phenomenon produces from the superposition, superposition of two sound waves, produces reinforcement, reinforcement, strengthen of sound in positions, in certain positions, and weakness, weakness of sound. No sound is heard in another position. So we have two types of interference. There is constructive interference and destructive interference. There is constructive interference and destructive interference. So, sound interference has another definition, which is a combination, which is a combination of two waves or more. They have the same frequency, same amplitude, same propagation direction. Same frequency, same amplitude, same propagation direction. It is sound interference. Interference may be constructive, may be destructive. May be constructive, strengthen the sound. May be destructive, weakening the sound or eliminating it together. They cancelled each other. When here, when here, a compression meets a compression, compression from the first source meets a compression from the second source, it is a constructive interference. Also, also, when a reflection from the first source meets a reflection from the second source, so it is also constructive interference. But when a compression from the first source meets a reflection from the second source, so it is destructive interference. They cancelled each other. They cancelled each other. So no sound is heard. No sound is heard in this case. So, interference of sound, as you see here, as you see here, here we have two waves. First wave, it is represented by the red light, as you see. And the second wave, it is represented by the blue light. These two waves, superposition, superposed together. So the resultant wave, as you see, so it is constructive interference. Here, the maximum amplitude. Here, the Pass difference is m lambda, where m is integer, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. The phase difference here is 0. So, please don't, don't forget this. And for the constructive interference, for constructive interference here, here we have two waves, the first wave here with the blue light, and the second wave with the green light. When they are superposed together, they cancel each other. So the resultant wave, as you see, no sound is heard. No sound is detected. So weakness of sound, destructive of sound. And the pass difference will be m plus half lambda. m plus half lambda. So if we have here constructive interference and destructive interference. In the constructive interference, as you see, the resultant wave, as you see, maximum amplitude. But here... But here, in the destructive interference, yes, the crest, here, here, they, they cancelled each other. They cancelled each other. So, the destructive interference, the resultant wave here, as you see. And don't forget, don't forget, in the constructive interference, the path difference is m lambda. But in destructive interference, the path difference is 
m plus half between brackets times lambda. That's for the difference between constructive and destructive. Constructive interference, compression with compression, reflection with reflection. But in destructive interference, compression with reflection. Compression from the first source meets reflection from the second source. What's about diffraction of sound? Diffraction of sound or sound deflection is really, is very, very, very obviously in our life. It is obvious, obvious in our life. How? Now I speak. And if this studio has a door, this door is opened. If this door is opened, what will happen? Of course, I speak now, so my sound comes out. This sound is a wave. This wave has a wavelength. This wavelength of sound is approximately, approximately 138 centimeters or 140 centimeters, approximately, not exactly. So, if we have the door is opened, so the wavelength of my sound, the wavelength of my sound is greater than the size of opening. When the wavelength, which is 140 centimeters, of course it is greater than the size of opening, the size of the door, the size of anything, the size of opening or, or anything, so sound will be diffracted. The sound will be diffracted when it moves in this way, so it is diffracted. So if you, if you talk with your friend in open class and the door of the class is opened, so another one outside may, may hear you. Okay? Because sound is diffracted. Because sound is diffracted. But here, in the sound diffraction, the velocity is not to change it. The wavelength also is not to change it. In sound diffraction, both of, both of wave, wave velocity and wavelength, they are not to change it. The difference, the opposite in the, in the sound refraction. In sound refraction, in sound refraction, the wavelength is a change. It. The velocity also is a change. It. So please don't forget this. So here we have audio source. And this audio source here, when it comes here, yes, the wavelength is greater than the size of opening. So it, yes, it, it changes in its direction. So it changes in its direction, as you see. After that, after that, we have here this point. We have here sound diffraction. As you see, yes, we see it diffracted. We see it change in the direction. So sound diffraction is a change or bending of the wave. It is a change or bending of the wave. When passing through a slit or an aperture. Slit or an aperture. Okay? But I concentrate in this point. The wavelength must be greater than the size of opening. Okay, that's for the sound diffraction. Here, if I make a comparison between refraction and diffraction, refraction, bending of waves, bending of waves, as they pass between two different media, the velocity is changed, the wavelength is changed, so it is refraction. We don't forget sine phi divided sine theta equals v1 over v2 equals lambda 1 over lambda 2 okay that's for refraction what's about diffraction bending of waves bending of waves as they pass by small opening or slit or aperture or passing over a solid edge or passing over a solid edge but the wavelength and velocity they remain constant they will not be changed they will not be changed. That is the difference between refraction and diffraction. Now, I want to ask you about sound as a wave motion. Here in this, yes, it shows what? Here, sound, okay, it says sound ray. It is refracted in this way. But it is reflected, yes, it points, falls in this point, it, this direction and reflects in this direction. Here phi is the angle of incidence, here theta is the angle of refraction. So I want to ask you to give reasons. Sound as a wave motion due to yes, the following characteristics, the following features, the following properties, 
First of all, sound propagates in, yes, in straight lines in all direction, in the same medium. When sound propagates in the same medium, yes, sound propagates in straight lines in all, in all directions. That's the first property. Sound undergoes reflection. Sound undergoes reflection. Sound refracts when it passes from one, one medium to another. Also, sound of equal frequency, equal amplitude, if the same propagation direction, they interfere. Superposition, superposition, sound interference, super phenomenon that produced from the superposition. Finally, sound diffracts when it passes, when it passes through a slit or an aperture, but in the condition of the wavelength must be greater than the size of opening. Okay, this is the general properties for, for the sound. At the end, I hope to understood our points for today. Sound interference, sound diffraction, sound as a wave motion. I hope to join us in the next time. Thank you and goodbye.